Jackie Smith, que se llama A Girl Called Johnny.
Ladies and gentlemen, on drums, Ralph Salmons. <laughs> on bass guitar, Angus Ralston. <laughs> Electric fiddle, Steve Wickham. <laughs> Keyboards and backing vocals, Brother Paul. Too far. 
Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Should we go and have a chat? Yeah. Bravo. Please. Here you go. Oh, thank you, Michael. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having us here. It's a really nice studio and a wonderful audience you've got. Where did you get them? Well, I think they're your fans. Okay. <laughs> okay. It did feel like a concert, right? Yeah, it does, yeah. What a great band you have. Thank you. They're the best band in the world. You know what? I can't believe that. Yeah. And it took a while, right, to get a like a musical get... family like this. Yeah, it did take a while. Yes, to about seventy-two years. <laughs> yes. That much. Yeah. How was how was it so difficult? Just to find the right cats. Mm. You know, Steve was the first. Oh, they've gone. <laughs> Steve. Oof. You found them and now yeah. they're gone. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what a tragedy. <laughs> You are a Scotsman. Yes. And now I know you've moved around and you've lived in different places, but I think you're living in one of the top five best places, most dreamy places in the world, which is Ireland. Yes. And uh, d does, the, does the culture provide you with inspiration for your music? It's a very creative place, Micah. Mm -hmm. I find Dublin an incredibly creative city. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm a Celtic person. Uh -huh. And so Scotland and Ireland are very closely related. And some of my ancestors were Irish, so I'm very at home there. Your songwriting in this album feels like it was very intuitive, like it was really free. I don't know if, if this is the right perception. Yeah, I think it is true. But when I write, I, I don't have a, a critic inside. Mm -hmm. My inner rock critic gets put <laughs> to the side. That's good. Yeah. But uh, you don't only like rock and roll, you like a lot more. Oh, yes, I music do. I love soul music, most of all, really, I think. 60s and 70s soul music, Marvin Gaye, Tamla Mota, and that's, that's my favorite. What a tragedy then to be, to be, you know, starting your career in the 80s. Well, <laughs> we have the misfortune, Micah, to live 50 years after a golden age. That's so true. Yeah. Well, yeah, I never even been there, but well, I was I a kid when all that when all those records were being made. I remember six or seven years old, and I heard it through the grapevine was number one in the charts. It's a great period to be picking up music, but because I was a kid, I thought it was always going to be as great as that. Mm -hmm. Oh, but that was a very special time. I realise now, and I'm glad to have lived through it. And uh, now you do oh. like some music that's been made. I, I, I read you like Kendrick Lamar, and, yeah. and you like. Anderson, Anderson Pack. Anderson Pack, brilliant, yes. Yeah. Yes, and uh, my favorite band at the moment is an uh, uh, American band called the, uh, the North Mississippi All Stars. Oh, of course. Yes. Oh, really powerful yeah. stuff. Yeah, good. Dirty, bluesy <laughs> rock and roll. Are you, are you a little mad that we are well deep into the 21st century and, and we're still talking about genres, though? Yeah, do you know my pet hate, Micah? I probably should say this is when people call the Water Boys folk rock. Oh yeah, that that is just so, so long gone. It yeah. should be. Yeah, there was a, a moment in time, maybe six months, when we played folk rock, but six months. Yeah, yeah, you can't, yeah. you can't go out there playing no. folk rock, no. not even for no. six months. <laughs> So tell me about your relationship with the studio. Is it is it a place you like? Is it hostile place? Do you feel the pressure of oh. something that's going to remain? Well, because the modern technology is so useful now, mm -hmm. uh, I have a studio at home. So really? I just work every day. In fact, my studio is on my computer. I was working last night in my hotel in Barcelona. Really? Yeah. So you have your laptop and... Yeah, and I'm, I have my headphones and I'm editing and... Yeah. Okay, but so you don't bring your mics with you everywhere. Uh, sometimes I do, and Wickham travels with a microphone and, a, and a, an interface, and so I, I can do that. Nice. So recordings become just a daily experience now. Used to be we would have to book a studio weeks or months in advance and mm -hmm. think about it and then do or die when the great day came, but now it's just record all the time. It's much more relaxed. It is. Yeah. I mean, there's that album of yours in a special place, which I love. I find that so hauntingly beautiful. Oh, thank you. Is it recorded at home as well? No, that was in a studio. In a stu it sounds really yeah. brilliant. It was all my demos for This Is The Sea. But did it feel like a studio or did it feel like you were there? In your... I'm afraid I had smoked a lot of pot, uh -huh. so I wasn't too bothered <laughs> about the studio atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
your career is not understandable without, I think, the word evolution. Mm -hmm. Do you, how do you, um, how do you live, how do you experience that? What is, what is the way, you, you just move um, instinctually. I'm just thinking about now and the, the immediate next step. Mm -hmm. And what's going to turn me on musically, or what's going to, what's, what's the band going to sound great doing next? Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I think about, just what's next. Not thinking too far ahead, and I'm not thinking about the past at all, just what's, what's next? And, and that's exciting. Of course. Yeah. It's much more exciting than, than being a stadium rock uh, band, I suppose. Well, you could be a stadium rock band and think about what's next, too. Uh -huh. Some of them do, I think. So you don't think that massive success is, is uh, uh, an antonym to Whoa. evolving? Mm, that's a big question. Uh, for, I, I do actually think playing stadiums to people that are quite distant mm -hmm. and having the screens and having to make some gesture music mm -hmm. does stop the creativity, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, someone like Bruce Springsteen now, he's a great stadium artist and I've seen him in... Uh, last time I went to a stadium rock gig was to see Bruce, it was in 1985. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, yeah, ago. and I didn't like it at all. <laughs> I saw him in a theatre and he was brilliant. And mm -hmm. He was impressive, but it just wasn't for me. But he's kept his music changing. The stadium rock thing hasn't stopped his creativity. That's such a good example. I would think the same person for something, for somebody who stays true to who they are, yeah. but still, you know, can manage he's that He's always kind of... changing, always trying something different. And his Broadway musical and his book and his new album with all the orchestra music, his Jim Webb influence. Yeah, good for Bruce. Good for him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, Mike, it was such a pleasure, first of all, to, to listen to, to you and, and the band, to the Water Boys, and, of course, to talk to you. Thank you, Mike. A pleasure talking to you. Really soon. good time. Thanks for having us. Here. Y hasta aquí Mike Scott and the Water Boys. Nos vamos con el reportaje de Ramiro Coy. Volvemos al plateau con Amaya. No sé si os suena.